Hello, my name is Virginia Kaklamani. I'm professor of medicine at UT Health in San Antonio, United States. And today I will talk to you about a subset analysis from the Emerald trial. As a reminder, the Emerald trial is a phase three clinical trial looking at l in uh, comparison to standard of care endocrine therapy, which was either fulvestrin or an aromatase inhibitor in patients with metastatic HR positive HER2 negative breast cancer. All patients on the trial received the CDK4-6 inhibitor, and then some patients, around 30%, received chemotherapy. When uh, the Emerald trial data was presented, it showed that l significantly improved progression-free survival compared to standard of care endocrine therapy in patients that had tumors with ESR1 mutations. Subsequent analyses focused on the duration of a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor as a, a, a way to measure uh, endocrine sensitivity and endocrine resistance. And what we found was the patients that had received the prior CDK4-6 inhibitors for at least 12 months had a median progression-free survival on l of uh, 8.6 months compared to only 1.9 months with standard of care endocrine therapy. Subsequent to that analysis and establishing the fact that patients that have a longer duration on the CDK4-6 inhibitor harbor an ESR1-mutated tumor receive a benefit, a substantial benefit from l we performed other analyses looking at other factors such as bone metastases, liver and lung metastases, present of a PIK3CA mutation, present of a P53 mutation as well. And what we found was that l outperformed standard of care endocrine therapy with a median PFS, depending on what subset we looked at, of anywhere between 5 to 8.6 even nine months at some of the subsets uh, compared to standard of care endocrine therapy that, that remained at that two-month median PFS rate. So the, the uh, elocestrant activity was regardless of whether patients had prior uh, liver or lung metastases, regardless of the nov- number of metastatic sites, regardless of a commutation of pig 3 ca And this is extremely important because it shows us that if we do have patients in practice that have an ESR1 mutation and a PIK3CA mutation, we can give single agent l with a good activity, good clinical activity. We also looked at the types of ESR1 mutations the patients had. And when we looked at the two most common ESR1 mutations, again, the activity of l was very similar with that median progression-free survival of around 8.6 months. So this data is encouraging. It shows us that uh, the, the main way to establish who is a candidate for l is endocrine sensitivity, not other tumor characteristics. And so as long as a patient has an ESR1 mutated tumor, as long as they've had a prior duration of a CDK4-6 inhibitor of at least 12 months, we can give l and we would expect a median progression-free survival of more than five months and typically around eight to nine months. Now, when looking at single-agent endocrine therapy, one of the important things to consider is safety because obviously we would expect a better safety profile of a single agent compared to combination therapies. And l does not uh, disappoint us. l had a good uh, safety profile, mostly some GI toxicity, a little bit of nausea, a little bit of uh, GI upset, uh, but uh, only 8% of patients on the Emerald trial that were randomized to l required uh, an anti-emetic. And that is compared to 10% of patients that were randomized to receive an aromatase inhibitor that required anti-emetic therapy. So overall, good safety profile. There were no signs of any cardiac toxicity with l that has, has been shown with other, uh, other oral SIRDs. Uh, so very encouraging for our patients as well.